All right, let's go to the phones. Uh, Chad calling from Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to the program, Chad. Well, thank you for having me. No, thank you for calling. What's up? Uh, well, I've been watching your stuff on YouTube, and, you know, you're very active against libertarians, and I was just kind of curious to know why exactly. I just don't understand this concept that, you know, why you don't want freedom in your life. You know, why don't you want more liberty? Uh, no, I've got so much liberty, dude. It's, it's, I it literally, uh, I can't even fit it anywhere. What, what, I mean, what does that mean? What does that mean that I don't want freedom in my life and I don't want more liberty? I don't understand what that means. Well, I mean, for, first off, I mean, we could go on for hours, obviously, about this, but I mean, there's a, there's a new law by the federal government this year alone that outlaws 100 watt and 75 watt light bulbs. It, it ain't, come on. Is there really a reason to outlaw 75 watt light bulbs? Is, is that some cost, you know, caution to our lives that we're going to hurt our environment by using them? I mean, where well, does it yeah. end? Where yeah, does the... it's a waste of energy. I mean, uh, you can buy more <laughs> efficient light bulbs. But I mean, honestly, let me put it to you this way. I mean, aside from the fact that, yes, it's demonstrably the case that if we switch from incandescent light bulbs, uh, to either uh, fluorescence or LEDs, or which I prefer. Um, yes, it's demonstrably the case that we will actually save energy. It will help the environment. Uh, there are all sorts of uh, benefits for it. But let me ask you, let me put it this to you. Is your liberty really being infringed that you can't get a 75-watt light bulb, incandescent light bulb? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. I should have the freedom to choose whatever kind of light bulb I want to use as long as it's not harming another human being physically to have it. Well, okay, I mean, well, I first off, first off, first off, in your face, you know? first off, first off, it actually does. I mean, using inefficient light bulbs and using inefficient products does hurt other human it beings. It physically hurts you? Well, I mean, it, it, it actually hurts you. Yeah, I mean, if you if you really want to get down to it, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know that I could actually put a specific measure on it, but the more um, uh, carbon that we put in the atmosphere, the more pollutants that we put in the atmosphere uh, that provide electricity, yes, it creates asthma, it uh, creates other uh, health effects, it, um, it it continues a global warming, uh, which has uh, all sorts of different well, implications. But aside from that, wait a second, you don't place. have you don't have total. We can talk about your, your disbelief in global warming in a second. You don't have total freedom to get whatever light bulb you want. You only have freedom no, to right. get the you light don't. bulbs that they sell to you. Exactly. And I think, you know, they're putting regulations on which light bulbs that they're allowed to produce and put out there. It's, you know, and I'm sure that this is, I'm sure there's plenty of light bulbs that are, I'm sure a 100 white light bulb is not really hurting the environment like you people think it is. It's unreal to me that Suddenly, oh, this hundred white light bulb is gonna—it's hurting the environment so bad that we're, you know, destroying plants and earth and humans and all this. No, no, it's a light bulb. Okay, it's not hurting the environment like people think it is. It's really not. It's not. How do you know, you know this? They're gonna keep doing this. How do you know this? Because it's not enough. It is not. It's like okay, then why aren't they outlawing my car? My car does ten times more damage to the environment. And my light bulb well, does. So all why right, all right that's a great example. Vehicle? Now, um, now you don't obviously. Do you feel your freedom is also being in, in, impinged upon by um, uh, by fuel efficiency standards? Uh, to a point, yeah. Yeah, you of know, course, I right? I mean, because they... your freedom, we are all less free because we don't have the ability. Um, uh, to to have entire fleets of cars that average out at uh, sixteen miles per gallon. That's we've lost our freedom there, right? To a point, yeah, we have. Yeah, definitely. Haven't we also lost our freedom to ride our horse and buggies on highways? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you can do it as long as you have the standard lights and you know all the regulations. I don't think you, you can take it on a highway. Enough. You like have to go a minimum of forty yeah, miles I don't think an on hour. On a highway, you couldn't do that. You know, but yeah, I, that's I do unbelievable, that isn't it? That's, I mean, I mean, far. our forefathers died. So that we could have uh, the right to ride our horse and buggies on the highway. Our freedom's being impinged. I mean, this is how ludicrous you sound. I mean, because the notion that, 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 fuel, that uh, efficiency standards for light bulbs uh, doesn't have any impact on energy usage is moronic. Now, you could say that my freedom 
to have incandescent light bulbs is being so impinged that it is a, a greater societal value than saving energy or than conserving resources, than protecting the environment. You could make that argument, at least it would be rational to a point. Um, because that's the well, argument yeah, that's, that's made. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. Um, the, and, and so your fuel efficiency standards must be driving you crazy too, right? I mean, it, it, it bothers me, but it doesn't drive me crazy because I understand that we need to, you know, look, we have too many of these Wait. vehicles out there that are just, you know, what? burning away gas that, that we don't you need to be burning. They need to be more fuel efficient, not for the environment, hater. but for just. You. What? Freedom. No. Hater. <laughs> no, look, you I'm, hypocrite I'm of here. liberty. If you want to drive a car that only gets five miles to the gallon, I'm never going to be the one that tells you to stop doing that. Well, but that's not I'm the point, buddy. The point is the government car, sets efficiency standards. That drive that car. Government sets efficiency standards for vehicles. And that is an impingement on your freedom that is probably, frankly, far greater it, it than the efficiency standards on light bulbs. You're absolutely right. And I, and I truly I'm so, believe I'm that the government I'm shocked that you called no in about the light bulbs and have neglected this whole thing about, um, uh, about the fuel efficiency standards with the car. I didn't call in about the light bulb. I called in about talking to you. I just brought up the light bulb first because it was just on my mind at the moment because mm. I've been waiting for 30 minutes and I was just thinking about all the things that I wanted to tell you. All right. But that was just the first one that I thought of. Well, let's Look, go to number two. Around, there's millions and millions of laws here that need to be taken away because they're just infringing upon our freedom, that there's no reason to have them, and there's millions of them, and they keep adding more every year, and they don't ever take one away. All right, they don't well, give me another one. I mean, they... Um, God, I mean, we could go on for... You know, I saw... No, I know there are millions of laws that ETA. are coming in every year, but just go, get to number two. Well, I mean, I'm going to go on to this video that I just watched you talking about the EPA. Okay. Now, look, the federal EPA does not need to exist. Okay, statewide they can exist. Now, you said that this state, you know, government didn't do anything to this, uh, this company that was polluting this water that was caught on fire. You know, that's when the federal government should attack the state government for not getting in on the, you know, this corruption. It should never be the EPA attacks the corporation itself. The state government should have done that. The state All right, government you know, yesterday it, on this program, two days ago on this program, um, I interviewed a guy who has, uh, who has done some research into uh, a bunch of studies about the implications of the federal government um, forcing, and this, of course, was a huge imposition on your freedom, too, that you couldn't have lead in your gasoline anymore. Now, um, had this been done only on a statewide level, we would not have accrued the massive benefits from having a, a tremendous amount of lead in our atmosphere. Uh, if you lived in, uh, you know, uh, Alabama and they, they still uh, provided lead uh, gasoline, you would see uh, much higher crime rates. You would see reduction in the IQ of children. This is all established by scientists, freedom-hating scientists. And uh, uh, I mean, you could debate that. I mean, the scientists go out and say that global warming does exist and that we are causing it ourselves, which, I mean, come on, that's just bullshit. We are not, we're not doing enough to the environment to be causing global warming. So to say these scientists are proving these things, you know, I'd like, I like to really dig deeper into that one, to be honest with you. You could be absolutely right. I'm not going to say you're wrong. Well, here's, a, look, here's, here's how I would suggest right. that you dig deeper into it. Uh, just do a little bit of reading uh, on the peer review studies. Okay, I will. Um, and that problem right there, I will. You know, I'm still young and I'm still learning a lot of these things. I don't know everything, no. you know, so I'm still trying to figure all these things out. And some of these laws and regulations do need to be there, but very, very, very few of them. Okay. Not so it's like you're saying the EPA is not necessary. Work. So what do you do with, uh, with, with state standards that may allow for, let's say, more mercury to go into the uh, atmosphere? Uh, now, of course, that mercury doesn't stay in the confines of one state, right? It goes, it blows yeah, across sure. uh, state borders. So what would you do in that situation? 
Well, technically, then if you want to go to that route, then our country, it doesn't just stay in our country. It goes around the whole world. Yeah, so and that's why, why they try and have China treaties. And Europe and all these other countries about this, you know, Africa and, and Brazil. Why aren't we going to them? Why aren't they, you know, let's make sure that well, they're we, all doing this, too. It's just, we try and do that. Na- now we try and do that with international standard. treaties. But you understand there's a difference yeah, between well, you understand there's a difference between the relationship between, say, uh, New Jersey and Delaware, as opposed to the United States and, say, uh, even Canada or um, uh, some other country. You understand that states are not separate countries, right? That we have a federation, not a... Uh, not yes. Okay, you understand that. So you understand there's a different dynamic, but you're also aware that we have... That, but at the same time, these states are supposed to be run solely by themselves. They were never designed to be controlled by the federal government like they are. They weren't designed that way. They, what what are you talking about? When was this design that took place? That uh, that that these are you states... serious? Go look at the go look at it. when the founding fathers you know developed this country. They mm-hmm. wanted the states to kind of run themselves. They didn't ever imagine that the federal government. Well, some of them did, but a lot of them, like Thomas Jefferson, did not. He did not yeah. think that the federal government was going to make federal laws about outlawing marijuana nationally. But some kind, some states like. California has legalized it medically, but they still will arrest you for it federally. It's, they never saw that happening. They're contradicting each other. These are things that are bad. These are things that should not be going on. You should allow the states to run themselves, and if they want to do something like legalize marijuana, then the feds should not be able to walk in there and arrest you for it. That's now, the problem that I have How many with states it. were there when, uh, when we had that, uh, what was that document? The Articles the, of Confederation. Yeah, the the other one that came after that, the the, the Constitution. The Constitution, you our, our Constitution right now. Yeah, that I mean, it um, talks well, about how we have a now. federal government and states and that type of thing. So what you're saying that because we have 50 instead of 13, it makes a big difference. No, my point is, is that the idea that states were not designed uh, to be in a federal government is sort of a strange thing to say. No, 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 I never said that. Oh. I said that they were designed to be run by themselves under the federal government. We still need a federal government there to protect us as a whole, as a nation. But we will never have them have the FBI start walking in your front door about some well, federal look, law I that can... is otherwise allowed by the state. That's the problem that I have. I am okay with the federal government. So you have, have a no problem with, with, the, with federal criminal there. statutes. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. They do not need to be putting laws into our lives the way they're doing it. Now, I understand that they can do some minor laws here and there, but, I mean, we're talking the real gray area that you're going into now. Yeah, okay. So you have a problem with uh, with federal criminal statutes. I mean, there are some that I disagree with. Uh, I think we would probably uh, agree on, um, uh, you know, in terms of uh, marijuana, uh, you know, if it's legalized in a state, I think it, um, it should be legal uh, in a should state. Be it should I mean, be legal. It should be legal. Exactly. Uh, but I think that's so, but I think the federal government has authority over it because of the Commerce Clause, but that's, that's, another, that's another issue. Uh, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Well, okay. I mean, I understand. I um, mean, do you, what, about, uh, what about things like, would you, it's okay if a state has slavery and another state doesn't? You know, uh, look, I, this, is, this is a debate about whether I personally believe in that or not. I don't personally believe in slavery. No, There's well, I, that's very big of you. To, I'm not suggesting that you personally what? agree in slavery, and I'm also not suggesting that you personally believe that people should smoke pot. I'm asking you, exactly. do you think that states, that a state should have the right to institute slavery and that the federal government shouldn't have any say over it? You know, I do. Actually, I do. And I, I hate to say it because that's yeah, one of those I things where it's like I don't agree with slavery. But, yeah, I think if the state wants to have slavery, then, look, that's their prerogative. That's what they want to do. That's what all the people come together and they voted for that. You know, look, what does that say about those people in that state? But, hey, so, if they want to do it. So, you know? well, now, yeah. probably all the people won't be voting for it. I mean, just exactly. the majority in that state. But, but, so do you think that everything in this country should be run just by uh, an election? So, so in other words, if we vote to um, uh, impound, you know, I don't know, uh, libertarians, that should be okay. I, I mean, mean I where does this it, freedom and, and liberty see, that I... 
federally, I don't think that that should happen. If right. the state itself, if my state of Alabama wants to do that and they voted that in, I would have to move out of the state. Okay, I just leave and go to another state. I don't Whoa, want to go to another country. Makes you think I'm that we fine would let with you. going to another state, <laughs> but I'm not okay with going to a whole new country. Okay, mm. like, I, I can understand that you're talking about things that will never freaking happen. You know, that's not going to happen. People are not going to do that. That's just against human nature that they're going to say a mass group over 50 percent of the state of Alabama is going to come together and say, let's you know put those jail these libertarians. That's never going to happen. No, okay? libertarians are probably safe. Libertarians are probably safe, but it's not inconceivable to imagine that a, uh, a, a group of people would discriminate against another group of people. In fact, I would say that's far oh, more likely to happen. Hold on. I, I, I would argue that's far more uh, likely to happen than the notion that uh, you can't get incandescent light bulbs are going to be leading to a one world domination or whatever it is that you're concerned about your, your incandescent light bulbs. I'm concerned about the future of it. I'm concerned that they're right. doing this today, and this is where government goes. It and just then what are they going to do tomorrow over after, after they impose uh, uh, efficiency standards on light bulbs? Then what's the next nefarious thing they're going to do? <laughs> you, that's, that's a million-dollar question there. Are oh, you yeah. serious? Like, that is a million-dollar question. What are they going to do? Question. Outlaw E. coli on our meat? I, I, I don't know. Like, I, they could do anything, okay? They could say that now 50 and 40 and all these white light bulbs, you have to buy a certain type of light bulb. You have right. to. You know, we're going to go down from having hundreds of light bulbs on the shelves to just one because that's what the government says, that you're only allowed to buy this one light bulb. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Or, or a car. You're only allowed to buy a Prius, period. In a story, can't buy anything else. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with the, the right to not have a choice anymore? To not have a choice, to have only one car that I can buy. We the all would have to drive around in one car. My God, I can't. Just one car. I, I can't even imagine that dystopia that you're describing. Um, the uh, yeah, I mean, yes, I suppose it's I possible. That, and I could say the same to you. I, I suppose it's possible that that someday the government would force us all to buy black lighting or something like that. Um, or, um, but uh, I don't see any evidence that uh, the imposition of, let's say, efficiency standards on cars has um, limited the amount of choices of cars that we have. Do you see any evidence to that? Not yet. No. You know, not yet. But, but there's still, you know, this is, a, this is what I'm talking about. It, it's where it's going to go in the future. It mm. keeps getting worse. What, what and makes worse you believe that? We're talking about having a free country. We're not free. We're not a free country. We have freedoms. We have some free things that we can choose and do. We do but have some freedoms. Part, we talk about. But but the, the 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 point is is that maybe it's not possible for to actually live in a society and be totally free. In other words, your rights you know? your rights end. Um, at my nose, right? Your, run, your right to uh, punch your fist ends at my nose, uh, but you're not free to punch me in the face. But I mean, a, why aren't you complaining about that? A, no, 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 no. Hold on here. A libertarian believes that you should be able free to do as you please as long as you are not harming someone else in their property. And me punching why you their property? Is harming you. That's where the government why their property? In, and then arrest because you should own your own property. Why? You should own your property, and it's Says your him. property. You should not have anybody else touch your property. What okay? if it's if a you slave? My land, can you own can another human you, being? And I can kill you. Oh, you did say you can own because another human on, being, right? You're on my property, okay? That's my property. That's Says what, what I own. That's my property. Prove it. Okay? If I come onto your property, prove I it. expect to be shot or told to leave. Hold on for a second. Prove it. How can you prove this is your property? Well, I mean, this is, a, this is a gray area again. If I don't pay my property taxes, I will quickly lose well, my property. Well, all right, no, okay, okay. you so got your property taxes. Who, how, prove it to me. Show me, show, show, how do you prove that you have your property? Um, by showing documents? I don't really what, know. What kind exactly of documents right are those? You know, that's a, government that's a documents? That's a good are those government documents? Yes, the government should be issued to protect your land. That's the that's the thing about the federal government. That's what they should be doing. Right, the Constitution they be protecting our property for ours. They right. should not be saying it's your their property. It's we our have, property, and they the government is there to ensure uh, property rights, uh, life yes. and liberty rights, and to promote the yes. general welfare. 
Yes. Yeah. Now, what does that mean to you, promote the general welfare? You know, to me, general welfare means that we're going to we're gonna make sure that your everyday life can be run and that we'll protect your borders. Or we're going to protect the fact that you can do and please do as you please and that people can't come and harm you on a day-to-day basis. No one can just walk Well, that's, that's life, gun, right? That's the protection you, you know? of life. That's the protection of life. What do you think promote the general welfare means? Well, I definitely don't think it means that we should be paying unemployment rates for two years. That's definitely what I don't think it means. You know, now this is again a gray area. This is the problem with politicians. They take words out of a document and they just manipulate them however they please. Well, I'm asking you. You're not a politician. Tell me what. I mean, we need to do. We need. You know, you can say this is a gray area, but I mean, if you're sitting on the Supreme Court and this comes before you, you can't go like that's a gray area. Let's just uh, reconvene in 20 years. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Look, if you want to ask what I personally believe, I just told you. I believe, I believe that the general welfare means that we all can co- – you can have your own property. You can have, it, well, it that's property rights. Life, liberty, that's property, property rights. Why would okay, they write and that and twice? I, I, Why would they write that it twice? Generalizes, it I, obviously means something different question. than property rights. It obviously means something different than well, what protection do you, what do you of think life. It means? Let me ask you, what do you think it means? Well, I think it means that uh, we're going to try and – enhance society for everybody. I think that means that we need to protect the commons, that we need to protect the the, uh, things like the air and natural resources for everybody. Uh, that we need to try and protect the air and our natural resources, but not federally, not to walk in with the EPA and then be like, oh, well, Well, but I'm quoting a federal document. We're going to charge you a million dollars. I'm quoting a federal document. Yeah, well, I don't believe that the federal government should be able to do that. I believe that. Well, it's then the you don't. You have a problem with the Constitution, buddy. You don't have a problem with oh, me. Well, I mean, you got I, a problem with the Constitution of the United States of America. I have a problem with all the amendments they're putting into the Constitution. I oh, do have yeah. a problem with that. You know, when was the last amendment they put into the Constitution you had a problem with? I have a huge problem with income tax. Huge problem with it. Mm, you know, was... I don't believe that it should be. You know, it's that's another gray area. But I mean, if you want to have income tax, okay, let's. That's fine. The, the mass wants to have it, but it should not be up to forty percent for people. That's unreal to me. That is ludicrous. That you should be paying forty percent of your income to the federal government to help other people live on their fucking ass. I'm sorry for using cuss words, but it makes yeah. me very angry that you should be paying so much of your hard income to the government so they can turn around and pay somebody who has 14 kids and sitting on their butt saying, I need money. Mm. That's unreal to me. Uh, no, you should be paying a standard flat rate, everybody, not to mention only 50% about pay income tax in this country. So therefore, only 50% pay for the other 50% when it comes to that. Unreal uh, to me in that do you aspect. know how many federal dollars flow in and out of Alabama? In other words, do you realize that you're living in one of the biggest moocher states in the country in terms of the federal government? That you actually, that Alabama, I think it uh, takes takes in more federal dollars than it pays out to the federal government? <laughs> Good. Booch off of them then, you know? It's like, if that's the way it's going to work, then do it. You know, why haven't they ever made a law about that one? Why haven't they had a pass the law that you can't do that? You know, right. I, I don't... Um, look, if, if they're going where, do, where, where does the 40% tax it, rate, where does that kick in, uh, that federal income tax? Um, for people who make over 400000 a year, I'm pretty sure, don't they have to pay like 39% of their income? Every dollar over no. $450,000. Not for the first $450,000, but for every dollar over the $450,000, they pay 39%. Let me ask you this. And where you does find, that stand in that terms there. of history of this country? Let's say the past 100 years. Is that okay. lower or higher than it's been... You know, I guess, I don't know, since 1940. Wait, what are you asking? I'm sorry. That tax rate, that is so disgusting to you because it's paying for people to have 14 children. Is that higher or lower than it has been historically in this country? Uh, it's fluctuated. Back in the, uh, during World War II, it was up to like 90-something percent, you know? But if you want to go back to the history of it, the very beginning, it was at like less than 10 percent, and they said that it would never go above 10 percent or something like that. You know, I, their numbers are not exact in my mind, but it's, 
you know, and then what happened, like five, six, seven years later, it was up to like 20%. You know, it mm. fluctuated dramatically over the, the history of Bad times for this country, know? I guess, uh, some of those uh, 70 years. Yeah, it's been all over the place. And, you know, I, and to say that it went up to 90%, I can understand why it did that, because we were in a world war and we needed the money. But at the same time, that, you know, look. In the 50s, in the 60s, it was you know? also uh, the highest uh, marginal rate was in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah, I don't know what they are exactly, what they were yeah. back then. All right, well, listen. You know, but to, I'm talking about today, it should not be 40%. You know, it's like over in France, they do 75% for millionaires, you know, and then look, all the millionaires are leaving now. They're all just bailing out in that country. Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm talking about. You can't do that, you know, not to mention these people that you're charging this much tax on, they're the ones that are hiring people and creating jobs. Uh, all right, well, Chad, listen, we don't, I don't have time to go into this uh, with you today, that these... Uh, these people are going to start hiring less people uh, because they're paying 3% more on uh, every dollar over $450,000 that they're making. Uh, yeah, but, including but Chad, the Chad, listen, let me say care. this. Chad, Chad, hold on. Let me say this. I appreciate the call. Uh, I got to jump because I got other things to do, but I would encourage you to, uh, to call back as often as you like. Uh, we take calls uh, oh, after 1240 Eastern. Uh, on the East Coast, um, and, uh, you know, call in any time. I appreciate talking to you. Yeah, I'd love to debate with you again about this one. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it, Chad. Thanks for the call. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate it. Have a good one. I was wondering, because back when the tax rates were higher, we didn't have the same light bulb regulations. That's so is true. there, like, a trade-off going yeah. on? Could, we, yeah. like, could I raise you a tax rate for a light bulb option? Like, yep. are there things we could do here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to tell you. There were times I did think that that was. Uh, I think I think I Jim from up. PA has got to step up his game. Right? Yeah. <laughs>